Hey everybody, it's Andy aka Max Rider. We are back with another unboxing video. This one's coming from Better World Books. Uh, this is from Mishawaka, Indiana, it looks like. I don't recall what this is. So we're gonna find out. Looks like it's loose on this end. This is one of those books that are packaged and it's like they freeze dry them or something. Uh, and I'm, I'd really rather my stuff comes in a box, but I'm sure I bought this book used. I think that's what Better World Books has. Oh, I think I just remember what this is. Let's hope. Okay, I don't smell cigarette smoke, so that's always a plus. Wow, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff on the outside of this book. All right, there we go. Sabine Baring Gould's Curious Myths of the Middle Ages. Sangriel, Pope John, Joan, the Wandering Jew, and others. So... Apparently, it smells like an old book, but that's about it. Uh, apparently, Lovecraft uh, read this stuff and got some ideas from it. One of the most brilliant and eclectic thinkers in Victorian England, the Reverend Sabine Baron Gold, 1834 to 1924, was intrigued by the grotesque and often... Hold on. Had to put the dogs out. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Um... One of the most brilliant and eclectic thinkers in Victorian England, the Reverend Sabine Baring Gould, 1834-1924, to was intrigued by the grotesque and often savage history of the Middle Ages. The noted author and folklorist's fascination with the period resulted in his this absorbing compilation of vintage tales surrounding such figures as William Tell and the Man in the Moon. Twenty-four legendary figures, <clears throat> among others St. Patrick the Pied Piper, <clears throat> St. Patrick the Pied Piper, the Knights of the Holy Grail, and St. George, are rejuvenated in this collection for a new audience. In addition to outline of the myths, the author provides an objective analysis for their origins, relevance, and extent of their basis in fact. Fascinating sources include Christian adaptations of prehistoric legends, misinterpretations of actual events, and outright fabrications. Accompanying illustrations provide a visual ap appreciation for these timeless classics. A marvelous introduction to age-old stories, this off-sided work will be of value and interest to students, scholars, and other readers. Unabridged Dover replication of the edition published by Longman, Green, and Company, London, 1894. Five plates of illustrations, 11 line drawings, um, 378 pages, five and a half by eight and a half inch paper bound C, other Dover prints. Okay, so I have a PDF of this book. It is in the public domain. Ooh, yikes. Pope Joan. And um, in the in that book, which appears to be about the same size, the, the words are very large. It's about 600 pages. So I think um, that that means that this is probably complete. It says on a bridge, which is great. The Wandering Jew, Prester John, the Divining Rod, the Seven Sleepers of, Ephes of Ephesus, William Tell, the Dog Gellert, Tailed Men, Antichrist, and Pope Joan, the Man in the Moon, Mountains of Venus, St. Uh, Patrick's Purgatory, the Terrestrial Paradise, St. George, St. Ursula, and the 11,000 Virgins, the Legend of the Cross, Shamir, the Piper of Hamlin. Wow, there's a lot in here. There's more than I thought. That's awesome. Bishop Hatto, I've read that one. Mm, um, Melusina, the Fortunate Isles, Swan Maidens, the Knights of the Swan, the Sangriel, Theos, Theophilus, and then appendixes A, B, C, D, and E of the Wandering Jew, the Mountain of Venus, Pre-Christian Crosses, Shipping the Dead, and Fatality of Numbers. So this is a nice little piece of research. And again, smells good. It doesn't smell like smoke. That's all that I care about. Uh, old books that smell like old books are fine with me. We're gonna like super fast skim through, check out a few of the illustrations. Was this Man, on the, moon, man in the Moon? I think this will be interesting. There's a lot of neat ideas in here. Bishop Hatto. And like I said, uh, this book's in the public domain. Uh, it cost me like $7 and with free shipping that made it worth it. And I was really worried that this would be an abridged copy that didn't have everything in it that I wanted. But I think this looks pretty complete. So there you have it. There's Glory. Curious Myths of the Middle Ages. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, I appreciate it, and I will talk to y'all next time.